Yo, Frontline, it's Val Soul. Uh, I'm here to talk with you about lab work. Um, it's really common to be handed something like this or to have this be part of the currency of what it's like to live with HIV or love someone who's living with HIV. Um, but it this is really confusing and if you're just looking at this um, raw and you don't know what you're looking for, uh, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. So uh, we talk about lab work so that you can sort of know what to look out for and know what the uh, um, know what it is that a doctor's doing or a medical provider um, when they order lab work. So this is someone's actual lab work. We're going to come back to this um, when we talk about the type of lab work that this specifically is. Um, so why do we order labs? Well, to monitor the status of HIV AIDS um, or other diseases like diabetes or thyroid disease, just as two examples out of a thousand. Um, we want to order labs to monitor side effects of medications. Um, we also want to screen for problems that might not cause any symptoms. Um, remember, symptoms are the things that we feel about a disease, but if you have a disease um, like uh, cancer or some STDs, m you might have the disease and not have any symptoms. You don't have anything that is a physical effect that you actually feel, but sometimes stuff can show up on lab work even if you don't feel anything. Um, so how often should labs be done? Well, HIV labs, CD4 and viral load specifically, are usually checked every three months. Um, and if you haven't watched the CD4 and viral load um, presentations that I've done, go find them because those are really um, crucial pieces of understanding um, HIV, uh, HIV treatment uh, and sort of regular health maintenance for HIV. Um, Often we'll do um, other routine labs every three months um, since you know you're in and getting your blood drawn anyways. Um, but sometimes labs may need to be checked more frequently than that, particularly um, if uh, medications have recently been changed or you're starting new medications or if there are new symptoms that we haven't been able to diagnose. Um, and I say we, I should remind everybody that I'm not a doctor. Uh, and that you don't have to be a doctor to understand HIV information. Uh, here's a slide. I hate needles. Is there any way around this? Most people do hate needles. Unfortunately, there's not an easier way. Um, most tests uh, that providers do require blood. Um, and so it's important to have a good relationship with your doctor. If you're nervous about needles or about having your blood drawn, let your provider know. Um, and for people who are what they call a difficult stick, um, that is, they don't, uh, the, the blood isn't drawn easily, um, or if the regular blood draw person is having a hard time, you absolutely have a right to find someone else to do it. Um, there is a, a what's known as a femoral stick um, in order to obtain blood from a large vein in your leg. That can be a kind of a, an easier stick in terms of getting to the blood and a harder stick in terms of the pain involved. Um, so let's talk now about what all the things are that a provider might be checking. Uh, standard blood draw typically includes CD4 count, that is T cells, HIV viral load, complete blood count, chemistry panel, liver function test, may also include STDs, cholesterol testing, um, uh, PSA is uh, prostate specific antigen, I think. Uh, I hope that's right. Uh, testosterone levels, urinalysis, hepatitis screen, um, test to monitor status of hepatitis B or C infection, um, and resistance testing. Um, so we're going to go into all of these more uh, in detail. Okay, CD4 count, we've already talked about this otherwise in the class, in another place in the class. Um, who needs it? Well, everyone with HIV. How often? Usually every three months. Um, the standard of care is three to four times a year, so three to every three to four months. 
What does it tell you? Number of CD4 cells in your body, which reflects the health of your immune system. What it actually tells you is number of CD4 cells in a tablespoon of blood, um, but that can be an important indicator um, uh, of the health of the immune system. Uh, and your provider will, will get two different numbers, an absolute count and a CD4 percentage. Both of them are important. Um, and uh, so if you're fresh to frontline teaching, you're not familiar with CD4, um, like I said, go find that presentation in our YouTube channel um, because it's crucial. Uh, and, and something that I want to just add is that most people not living with HIV don't get CD4 counts done. Um, and this isn't, it's not the standard of care for everybody at every medical visit. This is something specifically because we know that HIV targets CD4 cells for infection. Um, uh, we want to keep track of how the CD4 cells are doing if we know that somebody is HIV infected, but we don't keep track of it normally if someone doesn't have HIV. So uh, this is this is not something that everybody knows. Everybody doesn't know their CD4 count. Then we have the viral load, um, and here's a cartoon picture of the virus. Who needs it? Everyone with HIV. Um, and someone not living with HIV is not going to have a detectable viral load, right? Um, so how often? Usually every three months, more often if starting or changing medicine. And what does it tell you? The amount of HIV in your blood, again, in a tablespoon of blood, um, it can also indicate how well the meds are working. If someone starts meds, we would expect to see the viral load um, in their body go down. Um, and if someone starts meds and the viral load in their body is the same as it was before they started meds, if their viral load doesn't go down, then obviously the meds aren't really working that well. Um, so we'll uh, you talk a little bit more about what next, what happens at that point in a different section. Uh, so complete blood count or CBC is standard. Um, and here's a family portrait of who all it counts, red blood cell, platelet, white blood cell. Um, so who needs it? Everyone with HIV. This is actually a more common test um, for folks not um, not living with HIV. Uh, everyone having a CD4 done. Um, how often when a CD4 test is offered um, to evaluate symptoms? And what does it tell you? All the different levels of the cells that make up the blood. So white blood cells, um, or WBC, those are the infection fighting cells. Red blood cells, particularly hemoglobin and hematocrit, um, which are oxygen carrying cells, those, these guys, which is what everyone thinks of when they think of blood. And then platelets, or blood clotting cells, which is this stringy little person right there. Uh, how's that for anthropomorphizing? Uh, so, this lab result that we looked at earlier is actually a CBC, and you can see white blood cell count. Um, and then often when you're looking at this, the thing that's confusing is that the results don't seem to have any grounding in reality. Um, so it's really important to um, be able to read the units and the reference range. Um, and so reference range is what's quote unquote normal, um, but you can see that that the reference range here for white blood count, this person's results were 6.6, .6, the units were um, thousands of units per, um, uh, that's cubic liter, milli milliliter, cubic milliliter, I guess that means, um, right, I'm just, I'm reading it right now, um, and the reference range is 3.8 to 10.8, so it's actually quite a huge reference range. Um, and then this lab company puts in lines, put like gives shading to the lines that are out of normal range. So neutrophils, lymphocytes, eosinophils are all out of range. Everything else here is within range, and these are all components of um, blood. Uh, all of these. Uh, so 
We're actually going to get to complete chemistry panel next um, because I'm out of time. I'll see you after the jump.